Hi right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the end times in paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this unbelievably gorgeous, it is a Tuesday evening, August 9th. 2022, uh, good lord, the heat wave has broken. We're heading to 57 tonight. We're heading down to 50 degrees here in a couple of nights. As paradise has returned uh, here in the Finger Lakes of New York. But uh, I'm not so much thinking of the gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous mid-August weather we are moving into here in New York, baby. I'm thinking about the weather moving in here in about uh, less than three months where I am, uh, you know, it's old man winter returns here and I need to decide what I am doing with my life, you know, under the, with the full understanding that it makes no difference what choice I make, that I'm going to be basically miserable. I'm just trying to avoid the truly horrible level of loneliness and depression that uh, this black void that I see this six-month descent into blackness uh, as the freedom of the open road calls to me uh, the seductive siren song of the freedom of the open road which holds about as much interest to me as uh, staying up here for the winter so anyway guys I have, I have mentioned Auroville, India uh, a, a few times, and I don't know if I've even told the story, but Auroville, India has now appeared in my life. In the past seven days, or less than seven days, Auroville, India, out of this entire planet, Auroville, India has been dangled in front of me by the universe two times in the past week as I have been voicing to the universe what in the hell am I going to do with myself for six weeks. So I don't even know if I've ever told the uh, original Auroville, India story. I apologize for repeating myself as I tend to do. Uh, it was in November of last year that uh, I was visiting my uh, my buddy and our tribes member Roy, uh, brother Roy, down in Pennsylvania. The first night I was leaving here for last winter, and so I was visiting. I was at Roy's house in Pennsylvania, and he was asking me, "Well, Hambo." You know, I was talking about selling my place in Florida. You remember that uh, Lulu did me the big favor by putting a bullet through her head. And, you know, how they say that life turns on a dime. So, when Lulu made the decision to put a bullet through her head, it completely uprooted my life in a in, in a good way so uh, it, it, it changed everything about everything when uh, Lulu uh, when was that last September put a bullet through her damn head and suddenly uh, I had a lot more options on the table than I had before she put a bullet through her head. So, you know, last year I was dedicating to selling my place down in Florida. So I'm, you know, now that 
Lulu had cut me loose, <clears throat> so uh, I ditched that place in Florida. So now, I don't have that place to go back to. I mean, I did buy a little acre of land down there, but that's, you know, it's just a... An, an, an investment to flip in a few years. It, it's not anywhere that I could live. So returning to Florida, although I'll probably go down there for two or three weeks and, you know, clean up that lot a little bit, it's not an option of, of where to spend six weeks. Uh, but anyway, getting back to uh, visiting my buddy, uh, brother Roy down there in Pennsylvania so he we were talking you know about Lulu killing herself and, and all of this and me selling the place and I was telling Roy that I was going to sell that place in Florida uh, you know where I was going to be a snowbird f for the rest of my life pretty much where I was planning to spend the winter every year for the rest of my life till Lulu came into my life and completely disrupted everything and now that she was gone uh, you know I was gone uh, that absolutely bizarre story so I said so you know Roy was asking me well Hambo if you sell that place in Florida this winter meaning this past winter what are you going to do with yourself next winter meaning the winter coming up here in a, you know in less than three months and my response to Roy at that point was I am waiting for a message from the universe where I am supposed to be next winter. I am waiting for a message from the universe, uh, which is pretty much, you know, the tack I've taken since uh, this all gets back to my Carlos Castaneda Don Juan Matus training. Uh, this is a lesson in affirmations, I think. It, there's, I'm not going to get into a whole nother Don Juan thing about the difference between an omen and an affirmation. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I voiced that out loud. I'm waiting for a message from the universe. It was probably three minutes later, three minutes later, that Roy's phone rings. And what it is, who it is, is Roy's buddy, who I had never heard of, never heard of this man, calling from Auroville, India, uh, where I had never heard of Auroville, India in my entire life. Never heard of it. Three minutes after I say I'm waiting for a message from the universe where I am going to be, you know, in the winter of 2022-23, uh, a phone call comes in from Auroville, India. Essentially, the fellow is calling to kind of plant the seed with Roy about coming over to... Auroville, India, to uh, spend some time, preferably to you know to get away from the damn Pennsylvania winter. And uh, so anyway, uh, the fellow he was walking around town with his uh, with his smartphone in Auroville, India, was walking up and down the streets of Auroville, India. Uh, you know, showing me the place. And he's going, dude, I mean, the guy had never heard of me. Uh, I'd never heard of him. And he was going, you know, dude, come over here. Check this place out. And he's going up and down showing me the place. Uh, you know, he was telling me that uh, you can get a nice apartment for $200 a month. That uh, he could set me up in a nice place to live 
for $200 a month that the food in Auroville, India is just absolutely over the top. Couple of dollars a day, I would have this delicious uh, Indian food. Uh, a a nice place to stay for a couple of hundred dollars a month and top of the line internet which of course is the most important thing to me and he insisted that it, you know what I mentioned I said well there's no way because of Sancho and he says it's no problem he goes people bring their dogs over here all the time that I just get Sancho one of these doggy passports and there's no problem at all bringing Sancho uh, over there. And, and uh, it, it, it was completely crazy. And so anyway, obviously, I mean, we were on the phone for like 45 minutes. He was giving me a private tour of Auroville, India. And, and it looked like there were worse places to spend the winter than Auroville, India. Uh, living in a comfortable house with, uh, w w with high-grade internet, eating this delicious Indian food uh, for a fraction of what I would cost to uh, spend to live here uh, in, this, in my own shithole country. And so then I went over, obviously, I started researching Auroville, India. And... Uh, it is, it is spelled A-U-R-O, Auroville, India. And it did not take long to find out that this is one of the more bizarre places on the planet. It is, it, it, it's just, obviously, I mean, how to describe it? Well, I've never been there, but... It, it, as far as I can tell, it is one of the bliss ninny capitals of the world. Okay, it, 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 these people, these little, uh, probably, I, I highly suspect, these little trust fund hippies, these young, beautiful people, trust fund hippies, uh, you know, with their pool table green auras and whatnot, uh, flying in from all over the world to send out green bubbles of healing energy to the planet, you know, as they uh, live off their trust funds. Kind of like uh, a whole town full of this party going on a quarter mile from where I'm sitting right now. Imagine, you know, that party that I was at uh, this weekend was a tiny glimpse of what it would be like to live 24-7 for six months, surrounded by these young, beautiful, politically correct, no doubt, limp dick, lefty greenies, these little, these little bliss ninnies, uh, the last thing they want to hear is doom it is doom and gloom the last person they want showing up in Auroville is, is some fucking crotchety old doomer uh, with a fire engine red aura the last person and uh, so anyway you got that and there's something about some fucking guru obviously back in the day there were there was some guru uh, head of it all there's some weird ass fucking golden globe I don't know if you call it an ashram I've never known what an ashram is to this day I don't know what a fucking ashram is but there's some sort of weird weird fucking thing looks like uh, I don't know is dreamed up by what was that guy with uh, I'm, I'm having a I'm more and more I'm having more of these senior moments like I couldn't remember Jill Stein's name I Buckminster is his name Bucky Fuller Buckminster Fuller 
You know, the guy with the dome houses? Imagine some Bucky Fuller dome house on acid in the middle of Auroville. I have no fucking idea what this weird thing is. It looks like some giant UFO. You got this weirdness. And, and then on top of it all, which I'm not sure what the hell this is all about, the United Nations. The United Nations, the UN, the, you know, the globalists, have their claws all into Auroville, India. Somehow, the United Nations is, is somehow... I have, you know, I need to go over there and figure that out. What the fuck is the United Nations doing with this bunch of clueless fucking moron, little bliss ninny, limp dick lefty hippies? And, uh, and so in any way, I, I have no clue what this place is all about. And uh, so anyway, I just I, I just kind of put it out. I, I, I kind of obviously just put it on the back burner. Uh, I've never ruled it out, but it just the idea is so absurd. It, you know, it, it is more absurd than when I decided when I was a, uh, you know, one of these lefty, progressive, uh, environmental, crusading lefty journalist in uh, living in Santa Cruz, California, deciding to uh, get my real estate license and start selling uh, real estate for Century 21. Uh, the, the idea is that absurd. It's absurd as when I was a successful real estate agent for Keller Williams Realty in Austin, Texas, when I decided to stop doing that and, uh, and, and dedicate myself to being a doomsday prophet, an environmental alarmist, and the... Uh, chronicler of the collapse and fall of, you know, Western of global industrial civilization. It's that absurd. The, the, the thought of me going to Auroville, India. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, but I just t tossed it out there as some crazy hand bone idea. And that was the 1st of November, when I voiced, I'm waiting for a message from the universe, what I'm supposed to be doing, uh, you, you, you know, this winter. And I got the Auroville India hit within three minutes. So what's been going on in my life, uh, as you might be aware of in the past couple of weeks, is I have obviously started thinking, well, Hambone, what the fuck are you doing with yourself? Starting in November. It's August, so I could not, you know, once August got here, uh, September, you know, in, in less than three months, I'm going to be leaving here, having no fucking clue where I'm heading, where I'm going to be living, uh, what I'm going to be doing, who I'm going to be hanging out with. Uh, I, I see myself uh, just six months in a black hole sitting alone and uh, with my thumb up my ass in that little trailer uh, out in the middle of fucking nowhere, uh, bored off of my ass, depressed as hell. So, uh, w which is the vision I'm getting, and so anyway, I have been voicing to the universe. I need. I'm waiting for a message from the universe where I'm supposed to go, and what do you think has happened twice in the past seven days? Is Auroville, India, 
has just fallen out of the sky. It's not like I was, uh, I was, uh, you know, looking for information on Auroville, India. So I, I think I might have mentioned last week, like I was just surfing around Netflix. You, you know how you do, you surf around Netflix, so what am I going to watch here tonight? And, and there's a damn new video. I don't even know if it's a new video, but anyway, there's a video on Netflix right now that I never knew existed about Auroville, India. And so that was a few days ago, and then I don't know how many of you heard that little eco-pussy over there at Sam Mitchell over there at Collapse Chronicles last night doing this uh, rant. Uh, it was actually not a bad rant for that little eco-pussy. I have to admit, it's one of, one of his better rants because he's sounding kind of like him but a little tail in it. Uh, about what would a degrowth world look like? And in this hilarious article I was reading about that, it mentioned that something about some paper that was written by the World Economic Forum. You know, the Klaus, uh, you shall have nothing and be happy Schwab. The, the World Economic Forum s put together some sort of paper that was uh, delivered to the Davos boys this year in June. In June, there was some weird fucking paper about what a degrowth world would look like. Uh, written by the World Economic Forum, presented at Davos. You know, I, I mean, the, I mean, you have so many layers of them globalists, you know, the, them, them globalists that uh, the Alex Jones guy is always, I mean, absolutely bizarre. So I asked, I, I that little eco pussy Sam Mitchell said, can somebody out there find me this paper that was presented at Davos by the World Economic Forum. Well, I want to thank my Alert Tribe member, Fat Boy. Fat Boy, who uh, has been to Auroville, India. And uh, I'm not completely ruling out that Fat Boy will be joining me and maybe Brother Roy. Maybe the three of us will head over there uh, in, in, in November. But Fat Boy dug this thing up and sent it to me about what would a degrowth world look like. Now, of course, Sam Mitchell was pointing out what it would look like is living in a 49 square foot house and shitting in a five gallon bucket full of sawdust. That is the picture what a degrowth world would look like. Okay, selling your four bedroom, three bath house, um, uh, moving into a 49 foot, 49 square foot house, shitting in a five gallon bucket of sawdust. Uh, it is, was Sam Mitchell's vision. It's probably, that's pretty much my vision of a degrowth world. Well, the World Economic Forum apparently searched the planet searched the planet for an example of what their idea of, <laughs> of a degrowth world would look like. Uh, where people want nothing, you will own nothing and be happy with it. And, uh, and lo and behold, out of this entire planet, where did they pick? Where did the World Economic Forum choose as as an example of a degrowth world? 
Auroville, India, was was held was held up as the poster child of the fantasy of a. And I'm sitting here trying to imagine anybody at Davos, Switzerland, uh, living in Auroville, India. So uh, now talking to that fellow living over there. It sounds to me like if, if Auroville, India is an example of a degrowth world, that a degrowth world sounds like a, 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 a nice apartment or a, you know, splitting a nice home with a couple of people for a couple of hundred bucks a month, eating all of this delicious food uh, for a couple of dollars a day, and being surrounded by harems of these clueless little bimbo uh, hippie chicks. Uh, so that is the example of it. And, and don't forget the five-star internet. My guess is nobody in Auroville, India shits in a five-gallon bucket full of sawdust. Now, my guess is you don't have to go very far outside of Auroville, India. Okay. You know, to all of the little surrounding villages, you know, that house the people who take care of the little trust fund hippies in Auroville, who clean the flush toilets of the little Save the Planet Bliss Ninnies, you know, jetting in from all over the world to send Mother Earth, you know, a little green bubble of healing energy. Now, probably the women coming in from the surrounding villages cleaning those toilets. Now, they probably do live in a 49-square-foot house and do shit in a five-gallon bucket full of sawdust, is my guess. So, my guess is... The, the poster child of a degrowth world is not Auroville, but a mile down the street from Auroville. And, uh, but there's only one way to find out, and that is to go to Auroville, India. But anyway, it, it all gets back. So what has happened in the last week is I have had two affirmations Don Juan Matus that was an affirmation Don Juan Matus would call this an affirmation Mr. Frog do you think I should go to Auroville India yes or no Mr. Frog should Hambone go to Auroville India so these are called affirmations Okay, the omen was the original phone call when I voiced, I'm waiting for a message from the universe, and that call came in. That was an omen, and now I have had two affirmations to the omen. So I have now had three messages from the universe that obviously Hambone uh, you have nothing better to do with the net with six months uh, of your life you have nothing better to do uh, you have the money you have the time you have the money you have the freedom to head to Auroville India and I just need to decide Do I put my Carlos Castaneda Don Juan training to work and just fucking go for it? Just go for it. Now, obviously, it, it depends on whether Sancho really can go. So if Sancho cannot go, I'm not going. All right, so the next... Thing I need to I need to get an affirmation that Sancho Panza can go to Auroville, India. 
you want to go to Arville, India or not? So, uh, what do you guys think? Does Hambone go to Auroville or not? And, and, and I do need to uh, let you know that obviously if I do decide to go to Auroville, even this video it is scary enough putting out there, obviously if I go to Auroville, India, I will have to pull down Humpty Dumpty Tribe and probably collapse Chronicles even. But Humpty Dumpty Tribe will, will have to go dark for those six months. Don't worry, I will be keeping a diary. Uh, but obviously, uh, there will be no Humpty Dumpty Tribe for six months. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't need to be run out of Auroville by a bunch of irate pool table green bliss nitties uh, figuring out the mole in their midst. What do you think, little dog? Go to Auroville or not? I bet there's a lot of beautiful young hippie chicks who would take one look at me and, and I would have a harem of gorgeous young hippie chicks fawning all over me like I always did in St. Croix. So, you want to go hang out with the beautiful throngs of hot young hippie chicks in Auroville? Eat some Indian food? What do you think? I don't know if they have chippies or not. Don't think they have chippies in Auroville. Don't know about that. They have mongooses. You remember the mongooses from St. Croix? You'll be chasing mongooses. Ricky Ticky Tavi and all that. I'm gonna go get Ricky Ticky Tavi or not. Anyway, but right now, I'm not in Auroville. I'm in Wilseyville. Who needs Auroville when you got Wilseyville on a Summer nights like this, we're hanging out with ducks. Where are the ducks? I don't even know where the ducks are. Anyway, let me know. Auroville or not. Bye, guys.